So let's just get into it, bro. Um, let's start with Trajan Langdon. Were there any, is this how we're going to do this? If there are any quotes that you kind of want to tackle first, I'm going to let you do that because we're here because of you, because we want to hear from you. So if there's anything you want to get to about each person, just let me know what you got and then I'll just kind of piggyback off you. So starting with Trajan Langdon, Pistons president of basketball operations. He's had a lot on his plate, kind of getting thrown into the fire since May. Um, you know, picking up with the draft, you know, obviously when he was hired, he talked a lot about how agents were telling players not to come to Detroit. And it seems like he's kind of settled down since then. One of the questions I asked him was, you know, how has the process been? Because a lot of the questions when he was on, you know, on the podium, when people were talking to him, it was about, you know, team. And we think about the coach, we think about the players. Okay. And I wanted to talk to him. Because mm. He's not the only, like the players, the veterans, they're not the only new pieces. He is one of the most important new pieces on this franchise. So True. I thought it was important to kind of gauge his perspective. And he said it was a really rocky start. You know, it was kind of stressful to begin, but he's enjoyed the process. You know, he's done a great job of adding the new voices in the front office. And he said they've all kind of done a great job of solidifying their roles and yeah. letting the leadership and the players and the coaching staff kind of piggyback off of that. So, you know, I was really impressed with a lot that I heard from him. He seemed, um, you know, he's a very low key energy type of guy, but He's very straightforward with a lot of what he said and he seemed very encouraged by the direction of the team and mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm really excited i think piston fans should be as well based on what we heard from on uh on media day before i go any further bro i want to mention what he actually mentioned um regarding the passing of the kim bay matumbo yes um we lost a legend today the kim bay matumbo uh was a four-time dpoi i think him uh ben wallace the only ones to do it so uh, of course not Rudy Gobert. Um, so it's very, very um, sad day for the, the NBA world. I mean, he had a heart of gold, always had a giving spirit. So to lose uh, the person and the player, um, just wanted to shout out you know, him and his family and send our condolences to them as well. Yeah, he's a class act for that. He opened up, it's the very first thing that he said. And I thought there was no better or more appropriate way to do that. I mean, that, right. was, that was heartbreaking to see when I saw it on ESPN. So yeah. definitely prayers to his family. Um, I honestly didn't even know he was sick, to be honest with you. So Brain cancer. I no, no idea. Clue. I had no clue. And he's 58 years old, bro. I know. I he was older like that. I know. That hurt to find out. So prayers to his family. And, you know, shout out to Trajan for offering those condolences to start. Let's hear what you saw. Yeah, it was a lot to kind of peel into. We'll, uh, I'll Man. All right. So Trajan, a few sound bites from him. He said that JB, JB Bickerstaff, has done a tremendous job getting these guys early buy-in in the facility and on the court. Energy's been high and guys really like each other, which isn't a small thing. I thought that was important that he said that. And you can just see the vibes. The vibes are different. You know, I mean, the vibes are different last year. We understand it. Um, but it's just it just feels like a new energy because it's not just a new coach. You know, like you mentioned, it's a new president. It's a huge turnover with the, with the roster completely. So it just feels like everybody has that breath of fresh air, clean slate mentality, and they're kind of just ready to get into it. So I, I was kind of happy to hear that. He also said he's been going through the process with the NBA and Player Association to be cleared to play. And I think he was talking about a, a SAR there. Yeah. Excited to have him back, waiting for a resolution. Yeah. He's allowed to do conditioning, strength training, and non-contact drills. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I was a little bit concerned when I heard about this with Asar. I thought he would be ready come summertime because it's been six months since we have heard this news about you know him the blood clot so i'm a little bit concerned if i'm being honest with you um blood clots are not anything to play with you know with chris bosh into his career you know so that was a little bit disconcerting for me to hear i'm just gonna hope for the best and hope that things are okay with him now yeah he um he spoke about it as well um okay. yeah trajan said he's not really um he's not going to be able to practice starting tomorrow um, he's going through protocol with the league, going through a bit of a procedure to make sure that he's 100 percent and it's safe for him okay. to get back on the court. Um, but Asar himself, he said he feels good. So I'm at least encouraged by that. It's not like he's dealing with any ailments. He's not he good. feel slow. He said he's been able to work on what he's been able to work on. So there have been some signs of progression. Definitely understand some of the apprehension to, you know, where he is right now. But there's a little bit of good with the bad as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was a lot that came out of that. That was one of the first things that he noted as well. He said, everybody's 100% healthy, but they're going to still take it slow um, until okay. the star is ready to go and ready to get okay. uh, full and go. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. And that's why you're here, to provide exactly. more context. for exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the biggest things that I took away from this whole, was this whole presser. It was just the health, you know? Yeah. So that's good to hear, bro. As far as bringing in vets, he said, we brought those guys in for exactly the reason. The bolster not only the playing on the floor, but it's a long season. Help guys go through the ups and downs and stay even keeled. We've talked about it all off season, how important having vets is, 
Um, so it was good to hear him say that. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, the a lot of people asked him about Tobias, and he said that was a huge priority for them to get him over here to this team. Um, one of the biggest things he was excited for, obviously, was the fact that Tobias wanted to be here. Um, and you could tell it wasn't just, you know, a money thing or yeah. oh, I'm just here just to kind of fill time. Like he said, it's an important thing for him to be a part of this process. Right. And, you know, with the energy that he's had before with the Pistons and in the franchise, the great conversations he's had with Trajan Langdon, um, that gave him a lot of inspiration and motivation to be here. So, you know, Trajan's done a fantastic job, even um, with JB Bakerstaff, who we'll probably talk about in a minute. He mm -hmm. said the same thing. He said, yo, I was planning on heading to South California. He said, I was looking forward to taking some time off with my wife, my mm -hmm. kids, my family, and just kind of reset. But he said he had a great conversation with Trajan and was really inspired to come be a part of what was going on here. And yeah. considering coming off of a 14-win season with a 28-game losing streak to tack onto it, it shows how great he's been. And it shows how involved and active he's been. He's not yeah. dragging his feet. Uh, Tom Gore said, yo, we're looking at you to be the guy to be the brain of this franchise. And he has not rested. It does not seem like he is taking right. this lightly. He's been very, very active in making sure that things are moving in the right direction. And I'm I'm very encouraged with what Trajan is doing. It does not seem like, e even with him showing up at the StockX event, like him just being visible and being out in front to show that he cares and wants this to move in the right direction. It yeah. shows that he's hands on and he wants to make this thing work. So Trajan, right. Trajan's done. A, he did a lot of good things. He said a lot of good things, and I think he's made a lot of great moves this off season. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. He talked about you know Tobias being a priority. Like you mentioned being a priority. Um, his professionalism, you know, playing on playoff, several, you know, several playoff teams, things like that. So we're gonna get more into Tobias and to the other guys. Like you mentioned, let's get to JB, Coach Bickerstaff. You have any opening thoughts on him? Yeah, he's kind of kept the same energy as well. Um, he didn't really, he didn't peel out too much about, you know, like rotations or like lineups specifically, but okay. he's talked about how excited he is to have some versatility, having a blend of veterans to complement the young foundation. And everybody's kind of speaking to the same thing. We're not in the mindset of rushing a playoff timeline. They're not you know, rushing towards wins and losses. It's a step-by-step mm -hmm. -step process that they don't want to rush. It's kind of similar, no disrespect or offense to what we heard a little bit from Monty Williams, but it wasn't any confusing, head-scratching quotes by him either. Right. You know, he spoke to, you know, how he thinks Cade can evolve and develop in as like a franchise um, focal point of this team and mm -hmm. what he sees from the rookies and how they can contribute. Like, he spoke right. to a lot of different things about how he sees where these teammates and players can fit um spoke highly about jay Ivey as well who we spoke about um he gave a lot of good insight and it shows that it, it reflected in the players as well too it wasn't just you know his own vision it looked like everybody was kind of in line with what they were seeing and mm -hmm. a lot of the players seemed very encouraged to be under his tutelage even with some of the players being on their second or third head coach mm -hmm. in their young season so mm -hmm. to be able to keep those guys motivated to be able to relate and keep them inspired in the early stages heading into training camp shows that they're doing the right things he's been super involved with trajan and i think they're heading in the right direction and doing the right thing right now yeah i totally agree with you bro i totally agree just just listening to just the things that he says it's not just all just surface fluff you know he's actually getting into the nitty-gritty of the details about what he intends to do with this basketball team and that's what i like to see that's what i like to hear you know what's your plan we didn't really hear a plan from Monty Williams. Right. We just heard about his journey and why he was here, but he didn't talk about what he was going to do when he actually was here. So hearing the detail of his plan, the transparency of what he wants to do with this team, for me is like, yeah, breath of fresh air. Like you guys have mentioned in the comments here. Shout out to you guys too in the comments. We see you guys here showing up and showing out for usual. What's up, Dwayne, everybody here. We're gonna get to this too, Johnny, as far as the lineup uh, clues, as far as what we think is gonna happen. I think some of the, what they said today may kind of give us some insight. Yep. JB made some, he talked about some players individually. I'm not going to get too deep into that. Just surface level. He talked about JD. I um, want to see his ability, you know, handling the ball. They saw film and saw how good he was handling the ball. Um, he talked about what he learned in Cleveland, about having a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. I want to get to this too. Fred Vinson. He said, Fred Vinson has a lot on his plate. <laughs> We're doing yeah. some scouting um, as being the team shooting coach. Any thoughts on any of that? Yeah, it's important to have that. I think they did a really good job of surrounding him with the guys that are going to emphasize the areas that this Pistons team needs to grow with. So bringing in Luke Walton, bringing back Sidney Lowe, having Fred Vincent as not just the shooting coach, but he also talked about 
um, not specifically working with just the young players, but bringing in everybody to expand different parts of their game. So I believe even Dern has been involved with some things. Tobias Harris, who's you know regarded as a good shooter, but he's mm -hmm. been active and involved in these drills and working with Vincent and the young guys as well. Yeah. So much to the point where it's you know reflected to the relationship that they have with the young players. So right. he definitely has a lot on his plate. I've said that Fred Vincent is the ultimate X factor to all mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's a lot of guys that can learn and kind of take you know those next steps under his tutelage. So yeah, it's it's a lot on um, on the plate of leadership from Trajan and JB Biggerstaff. But again, they've done a fantastic job of surrounding themselves with the proper pieces in the front office and the coaching staff. Right. You can even say the same about the roster as well. You're not solely leaning on one or two pieces. You have a lot of guys who make sense, a lot of guys who are returning, even having, yep. I asked Cade uh, what it felt like to have Jared Jack come back. He was ecstatic about that. He said, it's great. You know, I did a lot of my pregame workouts with him. He's been a huge part of my growth and my development, and he's somebody that I've been able to be comfortable with and someone mm. who obviously helped him and wanted to re-sign here as well. So right. yeah, I think they've done a really good job of keeping the pieces here to help that development. I'm really, um, really encouraged by that. Man, talking about Fred Vincent having a lot on his plate. Um, I just like his approach too. He said, we're asking Fred to put together a program for everybody. Right. It's all right. different individually for each player. Just the preparation, bro. The preparation and the attention to detail and knowing what you're gonna do for your team. Like that for me, it's just a little thing. It sounds like it's not a big thing but we didn't have any of that last year there was no direction so just hearing from jb you know trajan and then extending down to jb and then by extension his his coaches as well it's just they're all in one accord it seems like yeah i wanted to ask them about that i didn't get a chance to get to the players about it but i mean okay. what we saw last season in the last couple of seasons a lot of rico hines runs a lot of the summer highlight tapes on the line that surface will go viral and whatnot we yep. see any of that this year and i really yep. wanted to ask them about it. i'm upset i didn't get the chance but to me it just seems like they kind of approach this summer different and mm -hmm. we see it with things like that because that stuff is fun you know it keeps the, the fan base excited and energized but for the most part they didn't really tell a whole lot of what they're right of. so for right. me, it was encouraging to kind of see something different in terms of how they were addressing this offseason even yeah. with beef stew saying like yo i've spent a lot of time playing the four last season but mm -hmm. this off season in training i spent a lot of time working out at the center position so mm -hmm. they're working on the things that they believe that they're best at and are best suited for this team to win and that right. was the key mantra thought of what they're trying to accomplish whatever it takes to win how can i help the next guy how can right. i help my team how can i be better on the next play like that was their vision and i think it's being reflected in a lot of the work that they talk about well said bro well said man Dress up, bless up, step up and get it. Lace up, face up, I'm here to win it. It's for my city, and the team coming with me. Headed for the championship, even if the road is long.